We've had so many decades in this country of people being treated unjust. And the fact that we are able to come together and rise now in a time where technology is booming, people have social media and access to tell their stories in ways that we never have had before. I think we're in a really, really interesting time in our country and this panel represents that. I lead Black Community Alliances at Teach for America. And, and what that means is being able to create, inform, and recruit an environment for teachers who look like the students that we serve in New York City and in 42 other states mm -hmm. across the country. My work supports Teach for America's black staff. There's almost 500 of us. Our black core members and our black alumni who are part of a network of about 50,000 people. Mm -hmm. um, the organization, as many of you know, has been around since 1990. And I think there, there's not anyone in here, I don't think, who's absent to the challenges the organization has faced to ensure that there's a diversity of teachers, but also an environment to support teachers who don't come from the backgrounds that our students come from, mm -hmm. um, and being able to acknowledge the nuances of that community and support of their cultural capital and not taking away from it. Well, the Women's March this year is definitely focusing on something called Power to the Polls, where we're trying to make sure that when it comes to the midterm elections this fall, that um, we actually have a good turnout of people who come to support. It's not just about focusing on women or black women or whatever. We need everybody. Everybody's a part of this movement. It's being led by women, but everybody's a part of this movement. There is a big chasm between, it's particularly white women and black women. There's a huge chasm. And it's existed for a long time. Um, you could even think about it with the conflicts that Ida B. Wells had in terms of her abolition work with the suffragist movement. Uh, you know, it's in terms of us not figuring out how to uh, recognize that black women are intersectional and we Walk, work in all those sections, of whether, and we have an analysis of race, class, and gender that maybe is a little bit more complicated or even sophisticated than what a lot of white women have had to um, develop analytically um, because we're not beneficiaries of the system in any way, shape, or form. Well, I think it's important to recognize that uh, you know, what happened in January 2017 was fantastic in terms of bringing people together, uh, but we have to really consistently march forward with the same kind of ideas. That's why we work largely with the unity principles of the Women's March, uh, which center a lot of deep conversations around intersections of race, class, sexuality, gender, being inclusive, and recognizing that this is not a single day, but a long march towards uh, liberation for all people. We're going to be talking about Coretta Scott King and also about uh, Rosa Parks and other people you might want to mention. And Coretta Scott King is arguably more political when they meet. Uh, certainly, she influences his politics, particularly around Vietnam. She really moves his politics around Vietnam. And she's active for 30, 40 years after his assassination. Um, on just this huge range of issues, international peace and anti-colonialism issues you know, are hugely important to her. Uh, but also all these economic issues. I think the way we often sort of erase then makes it more comfortable and easy to be like, we had a movement and it's over, right? Mm -hmm. um, and people like Coretta Scott King or Rosa Parks are there, but they're kind of like these sort of paper doll characters. Mm -hmm. Like even to some extent with Rosa Parks, people think about her only in her 40s. They don't think about her like the rest of her life. I mean, she lived life. until, she was like 80? How old was she when she 92. passed? 92. 92 when she passed away. So I think oftentimes, right, her story ends right there on the bus in 1955, right, when the actual Rosa Parks does all these, so many things, um, right, just all this political prisoner work. She, I mean, again, I could talk mm -hmm. about Rosa Parks for the rest of the night, but I'll stop. But just, right, so sort of we freeze, we often, the women that we do know, we freeze them or we two-dimensionalize them um, or we, right, most of us know Ella Baker, but we know so much less about Ella Baker here in New York, even though Ella Baker's this huge fighter for sort of the desegregation of New York City schools mm -hmm. and the sort of equal and excellent education in New York City, and we know so much less about that, right? Mm -hmm. So I think we tend to sort of truncate as well. If you are an accomplice, what is your action? Um, and I think that is both the question and the answer mm -hmm. for us to sit together and determine what our actions are in an environment where this president is making clear what many presidents before him has have made clear very underhandedly, mm -hmm. um, that they are not for us, mm -hmm. um, particularly as women of color. Mm -hmm. um, they are not for us, particularly as immigrants, DACA recipients, mm -hmm. people who have been standing in the intersections of this and have never been for Native folks, mm -hmm. right? Um, what are we going to do now that we have an opportunity to band together on an agenda that is super clear that we don't stand for? 
When we are placed in these positions where we make decisions, you need to help us follow through on the results of those decisions. Mm -hmm. um, you need to help us put the things in place that we need to build out these ideas. And you need to stand behind us, right? Um, you need to let us speak and you need to let us have that voice. Moving forward, we continue to kind of really focus on building community. Um, and within my chapter, we've really developed a mission statement. And part of that mission statement is about identifying well, how do we fight for and work towards a freedom city, right? So a freedom city is a city in which um, black women are accepted, people with disabilities are accepted, um, people who uh, have challenges, people who uh, may have physical challenges, people who may have, who may be of low income, who may be undocumented. So all of these people, we're fighting for them, black and brown young people, and we're saying, um, this is what a city should look like, and this is who a city should accept.